May 22, 2004. Residents of the small town of Hallam, Nebraska are enjoying a much needed break after a long week of hard work in the muggy late spring air. Yet, in less than 30 minutes, a tornado measuring over two miles wide will destroy nearly every structure in the town. Another community has fallen victim to the worst tornado season in American history. The 2004 tornado season started off slow during the months of January and February, producing only a few tornadoes along the Gulf Coast before unleashing two regional tornado outbreaks in March, first across the state of Texas on March 4th, then across Oklahoma and Kansas on March 27th, spawning a total of 50 tornadoes across the Great Plains before producing the first significant tornado outbreak of the year. On April 20th, an unexpected and deadly tornado outbreak ravaged the Midwest, producing over 30 tornadoes across the states of Illinois and Indiana. One of these tornadoes reached F3 strength and grew to over half a mile wide as it tore a 16-mile path of destruction through mostly rural areas, leaving behind circular scratches in the ground caused by the tornado's intense subvortices called cycloidal marks before crashing into the town of Utica, Illinois. The twister destroyed numerous buildings and became the year's first deadly tornado after throwing a vehicle into a building near downtown, claiming the lives of eight people. Yet as bad as this storm was, the 2004 tornado season was just getting warmed up. As the month of May approached, one of the most conducive weather patterns for severe thunderstorms ever recorded was beginning to set up over the central United States. Constant troughs within the active jet stream began to overspread warm, moist air rushing in from the Gulf of Mexico, creating both a highly sheared and unstable atmosphere and unleashing an onslaught of tornado outbreaks that produced hundreds of tornadoes. It started in eastern Colorado on May 10th as an isolated rotating thunderstorm called a supercell spawned seven photogenic tornadoes near the towns of Simla and Lyman, Colorado, dazzling both residents and storm chasers alike as the beautiful tornadoes tracked over mostly open country, followed just two days later on May 12th with another cluster of supercells, this time in central Kansas. The storms produced a regional outbreak of at least 14 highly visible tornadoes across Harper County, Kansas, including a photogenic F2 tornado near the town of Attica, where storm chasers captured this iconic footage of a house being lifted into the air. But the highlight came later that night, as the same storms produced an incredibly violent but slow-moving tornado after dark near the town of Harper. The monster wedge tornado crawled slowly to the northeast through the open wheat fields just south of town before slamming into a well-built farmhouse with two people still inside. The violent winds of the tornado completely swept the home off its foundation, sheared off the walls of the basement, badly scoured the ground, completely debarked trees, threw vehicles long distances through the air, and tore what was left into small fragments, but by some miracle, spared the lives of the family taking shelter in the home's basement. The tornado remained in rural areas before thankfully dissipating less than a mile southeast of town, sparing the lives of hundreds of people and received a high-end F4 rating. However, some may argue that given how violent the damage was, this tornado should have been rated an F5. Following the May 12th outbreak, a relatively quiet period of mostly weak and short-lived tornadoes continued across the Great Plains and Midwest but that was all about to change. On May 21st, a massive and long-lived tornado outbreak sequence began over the United States, producing nearly 400 tornadoes over the next 11 days. Starting along the Nebraska-Iowa border, 23 tornadoes reached the Earth on May 21st, including a powerful F3 tornado that struck near the town of Palo, Iowa. However, this was only the opening act for the power the atmosphere was about to unleash. On May 22nd, a significant outbreak of 56 tornadoes struck the Central Plains, including several strong and photogenic tornadoes along the Kansas-Nebraska border before producing one of the most infamous tornadoes of all time. The twister reached the earth at 7.30 p.m. near the town of Dakin, Nebraska, producing mostly weak damage for the first several miles of its track before beginning to gradually expand as it passed south of the town of Western, appearing as a large, dusty cone tornado embedded within a rapidly rotating wall cloud, masking the true size of the tornado, which had already reached over a mile wide. 
The twister continued to strengthen as it marched to the northeast, but remained over rural areas as it began to swell to a width of over two miles, becoming violent as it narrowly missed the town of Wilbur, destroying several rural homes and drawing closer and closer to the small town of Hallam, Nebraska. As the enormous tornado approached, it shrouded itself in a cloak of heavy rain and intensified to high-end F4 strength, growing to an unbelievable two and a half miles wide, the widest tornado ever recorded at the time. The entire town of 300 people disappeared into the dark silhouette of the enormous wedge tornado as 260 mile per hour winds damaged or destroyed nearly every structure in the town, completely sweeping away well-built homes throwing vehicles into the air, debarking trees, and tossing a coal train off its tracks. Despite the widespread destruction seen across town, the core of the massive tornado passed just to its south, sparing Hallam from the most violent winds within the monster storm and saving dozens of lives. The tornado tracked for another 24 miles before finally dissipating at 9.10 p.m. near the town of Palmyra. In total, the tornado was on the ground for an hour and 40 minutes and carved a path of destruction over 50 miles long and more than 2 miles wide, taking the life of one and injuring 38 others, and cementing its legacy as one of the strongest tornadoes to ever strike the state of Nebraska. Following the enormous Hallam Tornado, relentless outbreaks of mostly weak and short-lived tornadoes continued to strike the same regions across the plains and Midwest for the next six straight days. However, something far more potent was brewing. Starting on May 29th, a massive, negatively tilted trough began to overspread the warm, moist, and unstable air of the central Great Plains, prompting the Storm Prediction Center to issue a rare, high-risk outlook for severe weather. What followed was one of the largest tornado outbreaks of the year. The outbreak began as several clusters of supercell thunderstorms erupted along the dry line in central Nebraska, where at least 14 tornadoes tracked through rural areas before more supercells along the Kansas-Nebraska border spawned 21 additional tornadoes near the towns of Jamestown and Belleville, Kansas, tearing up crops and causing significant damage to many rural structures. At the same exact time, another discrete supercell erupted along the dry line in west central Oklahoma and tracked for over 200 miles, producing 16 tornadoes, including a powerful F3 that struck near the town of Depew. However, the main show came later that night as another supercell erupted in south central Kansas, producing a regional outbreak of powerful and extremely photogenic tornadoes in the same exact area struck by the tornadoes on May 12th. Starting once again near the towns of Harper and Attica, Kansas, numerous powerful, fully condensed, and incredibly photogenic tornadoes touched down and tracked through mostly rural farmland before moving towards the Conway Springs area and producing two large F3 tornadoes, one of which morphed into a large, wedge-shaped tornado at sunset, while the other became a violent stovepipe. In total, the massive 2004 Memorial Day weekend tornado outbreak spawned an incredible 168 tornadoes across the Great Plains and Midwest, claiming the lives of five people and going down in history as the largest continuous May tornado outbreak ever recorded. Following a hyperactive May spawning over 500 twisters, Tornado activity began to slow during the month of June, but continued to produce sporadic and mostly weak tornadoes across the country, with a few notable exceptions. The first began during a three-day tornado outbreak from June 10th to the 12th that produced 46 tornadoes, including two destructive F3 tornadoes in Iowa on June 11th, one of which was intercepted with a probe deployed by the late storm chaser and engineer Tim Samaras near the town of Webb, Iowa. This was immediately followed by an extremely photogenic but destructive tornado the following day near the town of Mulvane, Kansas on June 12th, where storm chaser Scott Kearns captured this incredible video as the tall rope tornado completely swept away a well-built home southeast of town and tossed vehicles a quarter mile away. The final notable outbreak of the month struck on June 23rd, producing twin large and destructive F3 tornadoes in Green Lake County, Wisconsin, one of which struck a couple's home near Lake Maria, unfortunately killing the husband and leaving the wife with critical injuries before merging with its larger twin and striking the town of Wapoon, but by some miracle caused no injuries or fatalities. As the year moved into July, tornado activity continued to slow down across the United States. However, 
Mother Nature had no intention of bringing down the intensity. On July 13th, an extremely unstable atmosphere began to build over central Illinois as a low pressure system approached from the west, setting the stage for one of the most significant tornadoes of the year. The tornado began as a narrow funnel doing F0 to F1 damage north of the town of Betamora, Illinois, traveling slowly to the southeast before morphing into a violent but highly visible and photogenic tornado west of the town of Roanoke, slowly closing in on the Parsons Corporation manufacturing plant. The tornado directly struck the plant at F4 strength, completely flattening the building with 150 people trapped inside, tossed steel beams and vehicles up to three quarters of a mile away, and scoured the crops in the nearby fields down to the bare soil before dissipating just to the south of town. Unbelievably, the plant workers had seen the tornado coming and evacuated all 150 employees to three concrete storm shelters the owner had installed on site just before the tornado hit resulting in zero deaths or serious injuries, turning what should have been a terrible tragedy into one of the greatest triumphs of tornado preparation in history. Just five days after the Roanoke tornado leveled the Parsons manufacturing plant, another potent atmosphere favorable for strong tornadoes began to set up, this time in eastern North Dakota. The tornado lowered to the ground from a high base supercell at 7.25 p.m., appearing as a beautiful cone funnel traveling slowly through the open farmland, but soon became violent and began to scour the earth, debark trees, and completely sweep away farmhouses, tossing the farm equipment long distances through the air and wrapping heavy steel beams around trees. A safe in the basement of one of the leveled homes here was ripped out and tossed several miles away, but the most intense damage occurred just to its south, where the winds inside the tornado became so strong that it completely stripped away all the grass and soil to a depth of 8 inches in a swath over 700 yards wide. The second widest swath of ground scouring ever documented surpassed only by the 1997 Gerald Texas F5. The tornado slowly began to weaken as its path became more erratic before dissipating in a field just north of the town of Marion, earning a high-end F4 rating, but was likely much stronger. Following the incredible Marion F4, the 2004 tornado season had already reached the average amount of tornadoes typically seen in an entire year across the United States. However, the devastating tornado season still had one last punch to deliver. Starting in mid-August, constant outbreaks of powerful tornadoes continued to harass numerous communities all across the U.S the most notable of which arrived from both a record-breaking barrage of powerful hurricanes in August and September across the East Coast and a series of devastating late-season outbreaks in October and November across the Deep South, adding an unprecedented 726 twisters to an already historic year for tornadoes. In total, the 2004 tornado season spawned an unbelievable 1,817 tornadoes across the United States claiming the lives of 35 people and cementing itself as the most active year for tornadoes ever recorded.